Hey witches, it's Willow Moonlight, and today I would like to talk to you about this amazing deck of tarot cards that I have. I inherited these uh, cards from uh, an instructor, a teacher that I knew from a couple years ago. I believe it was the year, it was March of 2017 when I got these cards. And it is called the Aquarian Tarot. So I hope you enjoy this video. Before I start, I just I just want to let you know that the tea that I am going to be drinking today is a blend that I found. It was a recipe on Pinterest. Here it is. Uh, it is a waxing moon tea blend. It has all kinds of great things in here. I have some Darjeeling tea. I have uh, red clover, some cardamom, some cinnamon, star anise, peppercorns, and I think that is about it. All kinds of great stuff in there. I will link it in the description if you're interested in making your own waxing moon tea. Before we start, I'm just going to pour myself a cup. This is the Aquarian Tarot. It was printed originally, and this is an original copy of the 1970 deck. It was illustrated and created by an Italian-American artist by the name of David uh, David Palladini. I am so sorry if I'm butchering that name. But here are the cards. And by the way, the teacher that gave it to me, it was actually a friend of hers who had the cards and she had several decks of tarot cards from my understanding. And my friend ended up getting these cards when the, her friend had died. So she ended up passing these on to me because she learned that I read tarot and her and I just really, really connected. So I was so grateful to receive these cards. And recently I did a little ceremony where I cleansed the deck, even though I've had it for two years, I felt the need just to sit at the kitchen table and light a candle and some incense, have a cup of tea and, you know, cleanse the deck and just sort of ask permission from the person who owned the cards previous to me if they would be okay if I were to use the deck. And I told them what my intentions were and that I understood this deck very well and how to, you know, I was going to read for, for myself and for other people. So, as I said, this deck is from the year 1970. So according to Bridget from Biddy Tarot, the deck is, it's, if you look at it, all the pictures are zoomed in compared to the other tarot decks that we see, like the Rider White, we really get this up close and personal feel with all of the the characters. They're all they're all zoomed in. We get to see a little bit more. Gives us that more intimate feeling. And she points out what is interesting that is that the characters are not looking directly at us and they seem to be lost in thought. If you look at this card, Five of Swords, he's not looking at us and he's very contemplative about what he's doing. Same with the Fool. The Fool in a traditional deck is looking upwards, but the Fool here, it looks like he's almost just contemplating and looking inward. Same with the Queen of Pentacles, not looking at us. She's really thinking of something. 
and even the cards where they're facing us, it still looks like they're lost in their own thought. This card here, the Eight of Pentacles, he really looks like he is absorbed into his own thoughts and thinking very intensely about them. And what I want to really notice here is the name of the deck. It is called the Aquarian Tarot. And I think that the name captures the spirit of the time that these cards were created in the 1970s. So remember, the 1970s was the beginning of a new decade. What led up to it, of course, was the 1960s. So this coincides I, with uh, two things well, that go together. First, the age of Aquarius. You may have heard that term used before. And the age of Aquarius is an astrological time frame in which that lasts for about 2,000 160 years and it's hard to it, there's a controversy around when this time period began or if it had began already and when it will end and while I'm not particularly here to discuss what I think you know where it all ends and begins and all of that I you know I do want to look at what these cards really encapsulate, which is the spirit of Aquarius. And if you notice, the second thing I had to say was the age of Aquarius is something that you hear as a, a catchphrase from the 1960s. And what an astrological age does is it captures the the ethos or spirit of the rise and fall of civilizations and cultures. So a lot of people in the 1960s really believed that we were in the age of Aquarius. So what does Aquarius really mean? Well, it's an air sign and it it's um it's an energy that is about friendship. It's an energy about humanitarianism and democracy. It's about freedom, idealism, modernism. It's very prevalent in, with nervous disorders and rebellion, nonconformity, philosophy, and veracity. And veracity, for those who don't know, is honesty, being honest with people. And this kind of sounds like the time frame in which was the age of Aquarius in the 1960s. These cards are so reflective and, and contemplative. They resemble freedom. The 1960s uh, was about counterculture and assertiveness, you know, people were standing their ground, they were about humanitarianism, uh, they were independent and progressive, analytical, look at how these cards, how, how much they're thinking, 